It's green for go. They're racing. He says go. He says Tara. And Tiger Tara rolls away from them on the home turn. Here comes another big boil over. Equine athleticism at its best. The king is in the castle once more. This is in one race. The rest are almost in another post. She is a star with a capital S. It's going to be a triple treat. A miracle three-peat. Ladies and gentlemen, you have witnessed history here at Menangle. What about that? It's getting right up on the sprint lane and it's going to bolt in. Hello and welcome to the Sunday session. A lot to get through on the podcast today. Semi-finals of the Breeders' Challenge at Tabcorp Park Menangle on Saturday night. We've got more semis next Saturday night. And there were 10 races, so plenty to review. Of course, last night was Victoria Cup night at Melton. And I must give Cam Hart a mention. I know we concentrate on the local action, but well done to Cam on winning the Victoria Derby on Petrarca for Emma Stewart and Clayton Tonkin. But back to the local action. What is on the show this week? I'll catch up with Jack Trainer to discuss discuss his treble, including Swayze in the Les Chant free-for-all. I want to speak with Ricky Alchin about his Luxa Turner. She's a perfect eight from eight and looks really special. Race caller BK is obviously a huge fan. He gave her a massive rap after the race and I thought his call of the concluding stages last night was good. Plus I want to catch up with Doug Hewitt after his double last night. Rip won the first and then Royal Cruiser won a Breeders' Challenge semi in the stewards room so I'll speak with Dougie. Plus the Menangle Express is back when I review each of the races. Plus I'll try and find a winner or two early in the week. Last week I had three tips. One winner from three but small T's paid 360 so a small profit but if you backed all of them. Anyway, there's a lot to get through, so let's get rolling. Third section was 27 and 6 as they're about to run for the money in the Les Chance. Swayze beat off the challenge of Star Major. Coming to the outside is our Muddy Rocks. Pete, so Pete said so is about to work across carts and right down the outside. Zeus Bromax letting down 150 to go. The leader Swayze though. Class is starting to come to the top. Swayze 100 to go. He's packing plenty of power. Trying its hard out is our Muddy Rocks but Swayze wins the Les Chant. Swayze beats our Muddy Rocks. Zeus Bromax, Star Major fourth. Swayze he couldn't have been any more impressive in winning at Tabcourt Park Menangle at his first run back since winning the Blacks of Fake at Albion Park in the winter. Jason Grimson, the trainer, was down south with Hi, My Name Is Jeff in the Victoria Cup. His good friend, Jack Trainer took the reins and Jack's joining me to have a chat. Morning, Jack. Yeah, good morning, Greg. Mate, uh, congratulations with the win last night. Um, good to see Swayze back at the races. Yeah, that's right. Um, obviously, able to pick up the drive while Cam was down uh, driving in Victoria, so you couldn't have been any more uh, impressive, and uh, I think it's good signs leading into a New Zealand Cup campaign for them. It was interesting um, when Star Major rolled to the top a, a lap from home, and, and you were forced to be in the chair. Were you expecting to be in that position 1,400 metres from the finish? Well, yeah, I mean, I didn't think you really probably should have had to sit parked in that field, but at the same time, too, I thought it probably could have been a possibility. And um, uh, as it turned out, it was probably only to Star Major's detriment, not ours. So it uh, just showed that he is levels above them. And um, yeah, it was a tough, deserving win. Were you ever in any doubt during the run? Did you did you always think you had them covered? Yeah, like obviously when he got parked earlier, I, I didn't think it was ideal just being first up. But the way the horse felt, he... Um, he just never really felt like he was going to get beat. Every time I asked him for a bit more, he just kept giving. And he yeah, just travelled so strong the whole way. And um, yeah, give me that feel was obviously to prove as to how he is so good. Did you speak with Jason after the after the win? Oh, yeah, just briefly. Um, yeah, he was just getting putting his horses home from Victoria. But yeah, he's a pretty confident man. Jason told me he'd be winning before the race, so I think it, it was expected um, as probably as most did with the short price quote. So. I haven't spoken to him since then, but no doubt when he gets back from Victoria, um, yeah, I'll be able to speak to him more then. What about Nathan Street for Freddie Tabor? Um, very good performance. I know you drove the horse in a heat of the Breeders' Challenge and it galloped, um, but last night did everything right and was super impressive. Yeah, yeah he's a real nice horse. So I drank, obviously, um, the first time I jumped on him, he made an error out the gate. and uh, Freddie's staying here with um, me and Jace for the carnival. And, yeah, he's put a lot of time into this, Valerie changed his gear over a couple of times and um, I've just been, been able to drive him a few times in track work and we've put our heads together and seems to have um, got his manners a lot better now and it seems like the pennies just dropped with him as his manners and you know always um, coming out the gate and everything like that he, he just seems to be doing everything right now and he's a really nice 
two-year-old. He's actually sort of gives you a feel like you're driving a nice three-year-old. So uh, I wouldn't trade him for any of the others going into the final as well. And obviously just need the right sort of draw and the right run. But he's a really smart horse. With the, the changes that Freddie's made, do you have to watch the horse at the start of the race? Are you confident that you, you can press the go button if you need to? Yeah, so obviously still still you probably can tell. Still just taking things cautious with him. Um the last two starts and in a trial before that, he's, he's showed no reason to think that he'd do anything um, out of character now. So I think he's on the right path. But, yeah, it's sort of is still just heart in the mouth for the first 50 just to make sure we're away. But once he's up and going, he, he seems to be good. So hopefully all that's behind him now. And, um, yeah, I have no reason to think anything would happen from now on. In. And he, he looks a, he looks a real-life chance in the in the final. Yeah, you'd, you'd hope so. Like, obviously, it's um, it's straw dependent. Uh, obviously, if the protest in the other race, both the winner and the second horse of the other heat were, were good, and probably Harmony was a bit of an eye catcher in, in the race, uh, in Nathan Street's race, too. He's got good speed, so it's no by no means is he just a turn up and take out job, but um, like I said, I wouldn't trade him for any of the others. I, I think he's got the all round package, and uh, yeah, I think, like, obviously, he's led his last two starts, but. He's got he's got very high speed and and he can stay as well. So I don't think he's a one trick pony, and hence why I wouldn't trade him for any others. The third leg of your treble is ideal in dreams. I, I, I would think that as a driver, she'd be a little bit of a headache because she's she is a little bit one dimensional, and you've got to time your run right. But um, to your credit, last couple of starts you got it right on. Yeah, well, she sort of I don't know if I've got it right or she just pulled me out of the, the wrong spot, but um. Yeah, she's got good speed. I think, like, I was quite happy to cruise up on my own last night. Obviously, we got cover halfway through the race, which probably helped, but it also forced my hand a little bit early. But I think she she's come back really good. Um, David Thorne's done a great job with her to get her back into this sort of form. And uh, on paper, she looks like one of the main chances in the four-year-old mares. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to being able to sit behind her in a couple of weeks' time. And, um yeah, I think she's obviously a main player too. She was vulnerable last night only because of the the speed or the lack of speed in the race. She she did a really good job, you know, like they they walked through the the uh, the first three quarters of the race. Yeah, they they did obviously. Um, hence why I got going probably a little bit earlier than I, I wanted to. But yeah, she probably yeah, her last two races she probably shouldn't have really won from where she was. Definitely two starts to go. It was um quite an unbelievable win. And same thing again last night. She's probably run a, a high 28 to a low 26 quarter herself and um, she, she, she's got great speed and she seems to be really good suited to Menangle as well where you can just save her up for that one run so um, yeah everything moving, looking good moving forward with her and I think she's had a really good preparation so yeah she looks like one of the main fancies in the four year old men. Uh, putting your trainer's hat on, Stella Arden, what did you make of her last night? Yes yeah, she was good, she, she's just a nice honest mare, she's um just run into one a bit better than her. Obviously, she raced a few of the boys last night, and uh, much like the the Ideal and Dreams race, once there was early speed, and um, then Will was able to back the speed off of the second and third quarter and, and run home in 26. So she's probably gone home in about the similar quarter herself. And, um, yeah, she's just a nice friend, but a mare that will just be nice, nicely suited at Menangle, and she's in the right sort of grade where she can... She won't win out of turn, but she'll sort of always be around the money. And what about last week's Frith Stakes winner, um, Bravey Kelly? Where's she at? Yeah, she, she comes through that run really good. Uh, obviously, she's done well to win last start. The, the, she's going to race uh, this coming Saturday. There's a free-for-all drawn on six, so it be nice for her to draw down low. For one, she hasn't had a, a great draw for quite a while now, and um, albeit she'll probably be racing the boys and, You'd probably hope and like to think that with the Victoria Cup last night and the likes of your Swayze racing last night in a tough race, hopefully a few of those better ones aren't there and uh, might just be another nice race for her to get into. And obviously her main grand final this preparation is hopefully the Queen of the Pacific, which is in the start of November. Um, it's obviously, we're not sugarcoating, it's a bit of a daunting task going up down there to take on eight or nine of uh, Emma Sherrett and Clayton Tonkin's top mares, but uh, she's definitely good enough to go with them, and as long as she's in a real good patch of form and I'm happy with her, that's probably where she'll aim to go after that. So just a hit-and-run mission? You'll just go down for the one run? Yeah, I think so. Obviously, there's a few mares races over the next coming weeks, but um, like I said, it's quite <laughs> quite daunting when um, Clayton and Emma have so many good mares, and, and you know not just one or two, there's eight or nine of them, so I think we'll just keep her at home until 
uh, at the start of November and draw a pendant and how she is, you know, a few days out will be the decider if we go, but that is the plan. Um, after the Queen of the Pacific, are you looking at races back in Sydney during the summer? Yeah, well, hopefully. Um, I she, she won't do a lot of races. Now, Kelly will just sort of set our targets for each different prep. She might have three or four runs each prep and, and then just have a little break. And uh, I believe that the Ladyship Miles been moved to May uh, of next year, so uh, not not in its normal February spot. So uh, it'll probably just be depending if she has a go at those sort of the Miracle Mile sort of lead up races and the likes. Um, will be depending on how she is each preparation. But yeah, obviously we'd like to target mares races. It's just not that many of them around, and they are a bit more spaced out now. So we'll just let her tell us how she's going. And yeah, she she won't just be going around for the sake of it in too many races. Is that a decision? F- that you make on your own, or do you have to you, you work that out with connections? Uh, no, it's still like me and um, owners Paul and Mandy Pierce are on the same page. Um, you know, she, she really she's done everything and more that she set out to do when she come over here. So everything now is a bonus, and uh, they, their main thing right from the start has always just been to put the horse first, no, no matter what the circumstances are or the, what the prize money's like. So um, yeah, she, she's good enough to go with the boys, but. You know, I'd rather have her for a long, like the longevity of her, and and not overtax her for the sake of it, just to go around a normal free for all when she's probably one of the dominant mares in New South Wales at the moment. All right, mate. Well, congratulations with the treble last night, and good luck um, with her when you take her south to the Queen of the Pacific. Awesome. Thanks very much, Greg. Turner heading towards the quarter marker leads the way by three or four metres on Forever Skyfall, third section was 28 and 2, elusive looking for a way clear, there's not one so far, Sarah Desloy to the outside now Luxa Turner given full board 250 to go, elusive out and chasing Sarah Desloy but with 150 metres left to go Luxa Turner, she's starting to go into overdrive now, all challenges swept aside, all threats neutralised, Luxa Turner unbeaten and unrivaled, beat elusive in third spot will be our ultimate Luca. Well, Luxa Turner, she looks a, a pretty special filly and she booked herself a spot in the Breeders' Challenge final. Ricky Alchin, the trainer driver, is joining me. Morning, Ricky. Good morning, Greg. Uh, Good mate. to have you back. Nah, thank you. Um, congratulations last night with Luxa Turner. Very impressive filly and she just keeps getting the job done. Yeah, she does, Greg. Like She's um, she's now unbeaten in her eight starts and uh, last night was probably going to be you know a bit of a, a test to see where she was at because we were going to spear her off the, the mobile arm. Um, and, you know, she she done it with ease, really. And, yeah, really excited for the final in the fortnight. You got a nice breather through the second and third quarters, but, gee, she's electric when you push the go button. 26 one up the straight. Yeah, she's um, – that's probably one of her biggest assets. Obviously, she's got the ability, but she's such a good racehorse. Like, she – to to spear her off the arm like that, and then she just come back to me so well and – you know, travelled well in the third quarter around the bend. She was just like I was swinging off her. And, yeah, just um, when I asked her to accelerate at the top of the straight there, like she, she put a, a good length on elusive. But to, to elusive credit, sort of it stuck to its guns and and it didn't go down fighting. It tried really hard too. And I probably think she's the horse to beat in the series. Mate, she's now eight from eight. Do you, do you feel any pressure going to the races um, with that record that she's starting to build? Oh... Look, it's always, the more they win, you know, the, the more people start to look at them and watch them, I suppose. Like, I know she's got a, a little bit of a following. You have a lot of people message you and things like that. But, you know, there, there is always pressure there to, to keep them fit and healthy. And there's always expectations that are set higher. But, you know, we, we just do our job and, um, yeah, and hopefully she can get the job done. She does make it easier being such a good racehorse. Um, you, you know, you obviously made your name years ago as a breaker and, and you know what a, a good youngster is. Where does this filly sit amongst the, the nice horses that you've had your hands on when they've been uh, early on in their careers? Yeah, well, she's right up there and she has been from, from the get-go. Like, I remember ring. I don't, I try not to wrap them up too early. I've been down that path early days. You get one and you get really excited and then they let you down. So now I'm more try and let the horses do the talking and and that's sort of how I go about it with the owners as well. I tell them if I like them and then, you know, I don't um, don't get too carried away with them until they hit the track and they actually come out and do it. And 
I said to Rosario early days, you know, this Billy says something about her. I think she'll be all right. And her first education trial, I think if you look back through a form, the only time she's ever been beaten was in an education trial. And we sat her. She wasn't really ready to, to be going fast or anything. And we took her over there. And I think they went their last half in 56. And I never pulled her out. She was just like in first gear. And I said to Rosario that day, this Billy's good. And yeah, she she hasn't been beaten since. Pink Bonnet, Gold Tiara, the Nutrien final. Um, she's going to be the dominant favourite in the in the uh, Breeders' Challenge as well. What is is there anything more for her in the season? Well, she's um, Breeders' Crown eligible down in Melbourne, but we'll just get um, get the Breeders' Challenge out of the way and then assess what we do. Look, well, more than likely, we will go down for it because it's, it's a very prestigious race and. Not very often you get a horse that's, you know, a genuine, serious chance of winning it. A lot of times you're going down there just hoping to qualify and get into the final. But I do think this filly is, you know, probably the benchmark filly in Australia at the moment. And what about the connection with the Laspinas, uh, the Laspina family? How did that all happen? Um, it just sort of was out of the blue, really, Greg. Um, I'd always sort of seen Alf and Rosario around at the races because they, they love their babies and... You know, I, I was sort of always in the baby races as well and always said hello to him, never really went into too much depth of conversation. And Rosario rang me out of the blue one day and just said, look, we've got this little horse here. He was by Christian Cullen. Um, we've got no expectations with him, but would you be happy to take him for us? And I said, yeah, of course I would. Um, and as it turned out, it, his name was Regulus and he was actually my first group one winner. And although it was... You know the Redcliffe Sale race. It was still a hundred thousand dollar race, and he won it. And he's probably overachieved his whole career. I think we won nearly two hundred thousand with him at two and three and four. And yeah, from then on, it just sort of, you know, the stable kept coming with more of their horses, and we'll go into the sales and buying a couple. And we've had a you know a fair bit of success as a partnership since then. Um, what about Harmony in the two-year-old Colts and Gelding semi-final? He finished third. G made up some ground late. He, he's a horse to follow. I really like this horse. Um, just got a few little niggly um, steering issues, and he just he galloped in the heat. And last night, I just had to nurse him around the bend a little bit, but um, he really got up the straight well. And he, he won't be out of um, out of his league in, in the final either. And Going forward next year, I think it's going to make a, a serious horse. Uh, Sugar for my honey got through to the final as well. Yeah, Sugar's you know she's she's been in nearly every final we've we've set her for, but she just lacks that class on the other fillies. But she tries her heart out, and you know she obviously the barrier draw will be crucial for her because she can't make her own luck. But you know if she run top five in the final, we, we'd all be happy. What about the three-year-olds uh, next week? What have uh, what have we got to look forward to in that? Um, yeah, I actually think the three-year-old boys is the strongest um, out of all the age groups this year. Geez, there's some depth in there if you look at horses like Better Be the Best, Captain Knox, For Real Life. Um, I forget the other heat winners, but there, there's so many talented horses there. And oh, I've got a horse called Montalbalo. He ran third in both his heats. And Van Basten won his heat at Newcastle. They're, they're both really nice horses, um, but it's a strong series. So barrier draws are going to be crucial uh, in the semi finals. And if we get a couple of good barriers, they, they can sneak through to the final. But whatever wins that race, the final race, I reckon it'll be in very fast time. Yeah. It, sometimes you, you get a dominant horse in a in a race where it becomes a bit of a procession they roll to the front but because there is so much depth in that three-year-old it doesn't matter who finds the front there's going to be speed from start to finish oh they're, they're, it'll be um yeah they'll run serious time in that race because there's some serious fast horses in there and you know, look Mont- Montalbalo he's blessed with brilliant gate speed and you know if he could find the fence somewhere and get cover he could, he could definitely earn money but um yeah, it's, it's a race I'm actually really looking forward to, that one. All right, mate. Well, congratulations with Luxa Turner. Eight from eight and goes into the final looking for nine from nine. Good luck at the barrier draw and uh, good luck in the race in a fortnight. No worries. Thanks, Craig. Time for the Menangle Express. Semi-final racing tends to be dominated by the favourites due to trainers and drivers targeting positions in the rich finals that follow. And I think we saw a bit of that at Tabcourt Park Menangle last night. 
of the 10 favourites. Eight were successful. One of them was first past the post, but lost it in the stewards' room and the trotting favourite gallop soon after the start. But there's still a bit to talk about. A race one rip started the odds on favourite and what was a carbon copy of a race two weeks ago, Bubba Scrub led and Rip was happy to take the spot behind the leader. Arden's ace got a nice run, three pegs and Little Bliss was forced to do the work outside the leader. Turning for home, Mitch Ford booted away on Bubba Scrub but that allowed Rip to get it into the clear and he proved too strong recording a PB of 150.4. Roll-up was huge in defeat, coming from one out, two back in a final half of 54-9 to finish second. Bubba Scrub held on for third. Surface Delight made up good ground after an economical peg trip. Race number two, Gennardi deserved the win after a couple of narrow defeats recently in bigger races. Four starts for trainer Jared Alchin, and he's now won more than $33,000. He worked forward, was able to find the front, just as well was happy to take the sit, which pushed She's Notorious three back on the pegs. Stella Arden got the right run in the 1-1. Key to this victory was Gennardi's driver, Will Rickson, getting away with a 58-5 middle half. And from there, he was going to be near impossible to run down. Place getters were both good. Stella Arden, she's notorious in a fast 26-8 final quarter. Our Uncle Jim worked home very nicely out wide and has put together a couple of nice finishes in recent starts. A win not too far away for, uh, for him. Race three was the first of the Breeders' Challenge semi-finals. It definitely didn't turn into a typical semi-final race. One fifty-one nine for the two-year-old boys, and the first quarter twenty-six-four was the fastest of the night in terms of first quarters. War Dan Buddy for a Vic Cup winning trainer Emma Stewart led, and Royal Cruiser sat outside the leader. Middle half was fifty-nine seconds, so the leaders did get an easy time of it, but they really ramped it up from the quarter. In the end, the race was. Decided in the stewards' room with first past the post, War Dan Buddy shifting out underneath Royal Cruiser, who couldn't have been more brave in the run to the line. Ironclad was good coming from three pegs after not finding a lot of room when the speed went on. Race number four became a procession for renewal when she found the top and rolled through the first 1,200 metres in 127.5. Anything back in the field was no hope. It basically became a sprint up the straight to try and secure a top five finish for the Group 1 final. Renewal showed good dash, getting home in 26-7. Lover rushes. She did what she had to do after securing the right run. She ran second. Libby Lou booked herself a spot in the final, finishing third. Sweet Haley Jane ended up missing a guaranteed run in the final after being third favourite in the semi. She was forced to do all of the work outside the leader. I think she's inside the best 10 fillies in the series, but the barrier draw didn't do her any favours in the semi. She now has to hope things go her way with a scratching or two to gain a run. Uh, race five was the first of the four-year-old mare semifinals. It was dominated by the horses that raced on the pegs. My Sweet Sabrina has now won six of her last seven. I actually thought watching the race, she was vulnerable on the home turn when Taylor Osman asked her to go, but she found, and she was never really in any danger. Beauty Play sat behind her and cut the margin down late, but never really was a winning hope. Uh, Zenzina was three pegs, finished in third. I think the final will be a lot more interesting with My Sweet, uh, Sweet Sabrina well in front of Ideal in Dreams. Um, but more on her later. Uh, race six was the Les Chant free-for-all. Swayze was the short prize favourite. He was having his first start since winning the Blacks of Fake at Albion Park back in the winter. He did have the two trials leading into it, but the 2,300 metres first up was a query. Jack Trainer didn't bustle him early off the gate, and he landed in a good spot in the 1-1, but when they went past the post the first time, he was in the death because Star Major got to the front. Um, David Thorne gave Our Money Rocks a push last week on the podcast, and he had the sit on Swayze, but as they got to the top of the straight, Swayze got his head in front, and he held them down the straight. It was a fast last half in 54-9 over the 2,300. Um, Our Money Rocks didn't let supporters down, ran second, Second, Zeus Bromack worked home late after sitting in the running line on the back of our money rocks. Race number seven, Nathan Street was the short price favourite. He did gallop in a heat of the Breeders' Challenge at Menangle, but that was a distant memory. He worked to the front. He ran through the first quarter in 27-2. American Spirit had the run behind him, and that forced Humble to race without cover. Slow middle half was the norm, 57-9, but the winner dashed up the straight in 26-9. American Spirit held on for second. The third horse, Harmony, was really good to the line. Liked the way he savaged it despite being beaten six metres. But if they go stupid in the final, he has some blowout chance for Ricky Alchin. Luxa Turner, uh, race eight. She was looking to keep her unbeaten record intact. But with Elusive on her back soon after the start, it looked a really good test for the filly. She charged off the arm in 27-3 from a wide draw, but then put the brakes on running through a middle half in 58-8 was electric in the straight, running home in 26-1 to make it 8 from 8. Elusive was really good late. She ate into the margin. She can win the final, 
Our ultimate Luca finished off well, but was some 15 metres off the winner. Race number nine, that was a semi-final where I thought the fave was vulnerable. Ideal in Dreams is a sit and sprint horse. Um, and when she settled back in the field and they walked early, she had a work cut out for her. Captain's Queen led. Sugar for my honey sat behind the leader and Kate's Virtue was three pegs. Sweetly spoken, ended up coming away from the markers to lead up the running line, giving Ideal in Dreams the nice run. But the sections, 28-5, 31-3, 28-2, it was set up for the front runners. Ideal in Dreams was able to grab Captain's Queen late to prove last week was no fluke. She's a huge threat in the final if they run along. Kate's Virtue isn't in the same class as the semi-winners, but she hit the line really well. Race 10, short price favourite, Funky Monkey Gallop soon after the start. This changed the race somewhat. Doff Your Cat was able to get to the front. Majestic Trio sat behind the leader. Royal Glen Ferry, three back on the pegs. Sunny G was forced to do the work outside the leader. Jared Alchin did say on the podcast he was disappointed with the last run of Doff Your Cat at his first run back when fourth in the McGrath Trotters Cup. But that run obviously blew the cobwebs out because he was really good. He was too good this time. He had to win with the run he got in front. The second place getter, Alder Baron Tess, was solid in the straight. She got really rough on the top turn. The stewards noted race roughly, but I wouldn't be surprised if she actually skipped through a stride or two. Forget Funky Monkey's performance. Win of the program. Well, hard to take anything away from Swayze. Death seat first up over the 2300. Was expected to win, but forced to work a lot harder than most thought. Strong victory. Jason Grimson looks set to win some more big races with him this campaign. Best beaten effort. I'm going to go with Harmony. Savage the line. Made up a lot of ground in the concluding stages. And drive of the night. I'll go with... Look, it was a night that was dominated by favourites and leaders. Look, Jack Trainer on Ideal in Dreams timed his run to perfection again. Nice mare. Loving the Longman angle straight. So drive of the night. Jack Trainer on Ideal in Dreams. Third section was 27 and 4, and still the leader is Bubba Scrub. Rip has all the options. He's going to try and come to the outside now. Bubba Scrub left the inside, so Rip will come three horses wide. Back to the inside, Arden's ace. Joni and winding up. Rip nearly up to Bubba Scrub. 150 metres left to go. Bubba Scrub digging in for the fight. Rip ranges up on the outside. Very late roll up. It's Rip in front. Close to home. First favourite home. First favourite. Rip will beat in second spot. Roll up. Third will be Bubba Scrub, fourth close between Surface Delight or Joni and then Arden's ace. Rip back into the winner's list on Saturday night with a good performance taking out race number one, starting to get a few wins alongside his name. Doug Hewitt did the driving for Bernie and Doug's joining me to have a chat. Morning, Doug. Morning, Greg. How are you, mate? Good, mate. Um, Rip continues on the winning way. Another win last night. Yeah, yeah. As we said, it's sort of good to get him back to where he is now. He's um, needed a bit of confidence. He's being a horse, it's always gone up against the best of the best. So after every setback, he's had to come back and be at the top of his game. And um, it's good just to get him back in his own grade for a little bit. And um, yeah, he's enjoying these these runs. Um, the last couple of wins have come off the back of pretty good trips. Just sitting behind the leader and getting out late, which suits him down to the ground. So it's good to have him back and in the winner's circle. He didn't explode off the arm last night, but you were able to, to roll through and, and get that spot in behind the leader, probably the key to the win. Yeah, I sort of didn't really chase him out. I um, just had to make sure that I had everything from the outside. I, I thought I would have been let go at some stage. So instead of hustling and bustling, I thought I'd just let him roll forward. And then um, once we got there, was, I think it was the best thing for him now that he's learning how to settle properly to take a sit on the back of Bubba Scrub like I did two weeks ago. And um, yeah, end up working out perfect again. Home in twenty seven four twenty seven five. Um, he, he just he looks like he, if you put him in the same spot every week, he's just going to keep winning races. Yeah, well that's it. Like he's took another second off his PB, so he's down into the one fifty. Feeling good doing it. He's one of those horses that can trail any type of speed, and um, yeah, it's good that he's learning how to do it both at the start and finish. So we used to be a little bit worried about letting him run off the arm because it took us a fair bit to get him back underneath us. But now, um, once he's on a helmet or once he finds a top up in a bit and starting to settle and really learning how to be a, uh, a good racehorse. I sent you a message a couple of weeks ago saying no into Dominion and you just said no, not not just at the moment. You're just going to decide and, and let him get used to being a racehorse. That's it. Like he's, The poor boy, he missed his hole too two-year-old um, season, he had one start at the start of it and had an injury and 
when he came back, he went straight into his three-year-old and three-year-old classic. So he was straight into the um, gold chalice at Bathurst and then the gold bullion at Menangle. And every time he has these setbacks, as I mentioned, he comes back and has to go and get some pretty classy horses. And there was no different this year. He had another little setback with um, a fractured splint bone. And coming back from that, we are sort of racing the clock to get him ready for the um, biggest race, hardest race he's ever seen and probably one of the uh, most red-hot fields you'll ever see. Like, the class in his age group at the minute is probably one of the best class groups you've ever seen in our sport. And um, for him to come back and have to keep stepping up against these quality horses, I, me and Burn and Wayne, I all sat down and thought it'd just be good to get a bit of confidence back next to his name, race his own grade and try and get some wins and some time on the board. So any what are the plans going forward? We just keep seeing him on a Saturday night at Menangle and, and he'll race through his grades? No, no, it's more just letting him get a couple wins back next to his name. Um, there's, there's no real outline for him. Um, now he's out of that 95 grade, he's up into the three for all of us, so that, that's going to be another test in itself. So he's a horse that would sort of just can pick and choose a little bit. We let him have last week off because it was a long trip and we just wanted to focus on the miles for now and the random barrier draw that worked out good. So um, I, don't, I don't think there's any point of just racing him week in, week out and busting him. We'll just sit back and pick what races we want to aim him at and go from there. It was the first leg of a, a winning double for you, Royal Cruiser getting uh, race number three in the stewards room. Um, good performance from the uh, Sweet Lou two-year-old. Unreal. He's um he's a horse with plenty of up. He's a big green bloke. It's still learning how to do it properly. But um yeah, it was unreal to drive him last night. Sitting park on fifty one nine outside him. Uh, up the straight and sub twenty seven, and was sort of still getting into his work close to the line. So he's um he's a horse that's going to be in all the big races later on. I, I feel and um. Yeah, it was it's just good to get a drive on him last night. Does, you know, running those sort of times uh, two weeks before the, the grand final, is that a concern or do you think he'll bounce off that pretty well? No, given a, a week off now, I, I think he'll be sweet. Um, as I said, he, he is a very big horse for his age. Um, still filling out, but that time... Yeah, it's unreal. So we'll just look after him for the next couple of days and then let him get back into his uh, work closer to the final. Were you pretty confident you'd get the, the nod in the stewards' room? Yeah, I, I thought so. He, um, from the top of the straight, we'd, we'd started um, next to each other on the fence and by the time we got to the post, we're out sort of three or four carts wide. Uh, it was just that last little bit where um, Bailey's horse just... He did have a Murphy on his outside, but was still boring out. And he just come out that last little bit with about 60 or 70 to go and end up locking wheels. And um, as I mentioned in the stewards room, you sort of don't lock wheels like that unless you have the momentum from the horse come from behind. So um, his horse went super in front and was just about out, all out in the line where my bloke was still just running through the line. So it, it would have been pretty close, but I'd say I, was, I thought I had all momentum heading into the finish. With that toughness that he showed last night, uh, barrier draws probably don't really worry him too much in the final, do they? Well, we spoke about last night, drawing three, whether we'd punch him forward, but um, he doesn't have electric gate speed, so we thought it'd be a little bit silly getting stuck in an early burn and <clears throat> we'd just let them sort themselves out. And We were hoping to be on a helmet or getting a nice trail into the race, but the way the race panned out and got a couple of cheap sections through the middle, it worked out all right just to cruise up outside him. But, um, yeah, as I mentioned, just to do it the way he did and get home in sub-27, like that, that's pretty special from any sort of two-year-old. So um, given the final, the draws are going to be important. If any of those better two-year-olds draw good and just jump to the front, get it their own way, they're always going to take some catching. But, um, yeah, from what he done last night, I think he's going to get a lot of respect and hopefully that can take him a long way into the final. Platinum Jewel qualified for a Group 1 for the stable last night. Um, honest filly? Yeah, she is an honest filly. She sort of started off with... She wasn't um, too well handled. She couldn't handle a little track. She always had these little issues, but she's just getting better and better. And she's a horse that can just keep on running. She'll run... Um, even quarters the whole way. She's 
never going to be an electric horse, but she's one of those horses that's always going to find herself in these sort of races. And I guess uh, we'll just touch on Lady Kingsclair as well. She went around in uh, the second of the semifinals for the two-year-old fillies. Um, wasn't able to qualify after getting a, a nice trip. Yeah, it, it was always sort of touch and go with her. We um, After a heat win, she qualified unreal and, and said she felt super, but she ended up getting pretty crook after that. And then we were sort of racing the clock to get her back. We thought she was... Um, yeah, she was going to be close enough, and like we thought, if we could qualify last night, we'd have a two, two and more weeks to get a spot on, but just wasn't meant to be. I, I still thought she went massive. She ended up grabbing the right rein around the top turn, which cost her a fair bit of momentum, but um, we've got a lot of time for this horse, and we're not too worried with that. We've got a lot of things in, in line for her, so we'll look after her, get her right, and then we'll target some big races with her down the line. And uh, what about next week for the three-year-olds? Anything worth uh, mentioning for the stable? Got uh, a cash tin, a horse that Jim, um, his sister, sent down from Queensland. He's done an unreal job since being here. He's a tough bloke that loves running out the trip. But um, he had to start down in Menangle and went super, sitting parked outside. Better be the best. Um, it, it's going to be a red-hot field, the three-year-olds. So he's a horse that could find himself in the final, but... In saying that, like, yeah, he'd, he'd just be happy to see where he ends up in the heat. Hopefully a good draw could see him close enough to have a strike anyway. All right, mate. All the best of luck in the finals, and good to see Rip continue on its winning way. Well done. No worries. Thanks for the call. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Winning. Hey, that's pretty good. Winner. That was legitness. That I say, all right, all right, all right. Wow, winning. Bam. Just like that. That's all there is to it. That's- that's all there is to it. A winner. Just like that. I'm the winner. Yes. Let's see if we can find more than one that we found last week. One from three. This week, we'll continue with the three. We'll start at Canberra tonight. Race four, number nine, Ice Blaster. We're going back to the well where the same horse was beaten into second last week at Canberra. Race is well on the track. There's a little bit more depth to this race, so there might be some more speed up front. Ice Blaster might not have to do all the work, get around to the death chair like it did last time out. And I think if it can come with the one run, it might be too strong. So let's go race four, number nine, Ice Blaster. Uh, at Penrith on Monday, they've got the Monday afternoon card. Race two, number four, a gift from the Angels. Was really good um, at Menangle. Hit a flat spot down the back straight and Brian Portelli was really into the horse to ask but it, once it turned into the straight it found and I thought the run was pretty good I dropped back in class it's only I guess the query is it's had the 26 starts at Penrith and it only won the one race but I'm going to go with race two number four a gift from the angels for Brian Portelli and race seven at Menangle on Tuesday been waiting for this one to come back to the races number 10 unfazed huge run at Menangle last time out came with a, a withering burst looks really well placed in a race of this grade and I think unfazed is going to take a lot of beating race seven number 10 on Tuesday that just about wraps up the podcast for another week the Sunday session will be back again next Sunday to have a look at the Menangle program on Saturday night. Now, we normally get this out around lunchtime on the Sunday. Keep in mind in two weeks' time with the big Sunday afternoon Breeders' Challenge Day, that show will be a little later than normal because we will want to review everything that's happened on the Sunday afternoon. Hope you have had an amazing weekend. Enjoy the harness racing, and we will be back again next Sunday to do the Sunday session.